Now, when you think of fantastic, flexible things, your brain might possibly conjure up images of Monkey D. Luffy, or maybe even Jet from Gladiators, back when gladiators were just very fit people rather than actual walls made of sinewy flesh. But Samsung is hoping to add its fresh new Galaxy Z Fold 6 to that list of top bendy stuff this summer. But of course, since Samsung spaffed out the Z Fold 5 last year, we've seen some seriously impressive ductile rivals from the likes of OnePlus and Honor. The OnePlus Open and Honor Magic V2 are undeniably superior smartphones, boasting trouser-botheringly good tech and innovative features that Samsung could certainly take inspiration from. Or, you know, just straight up copy. F*** it, nothing's original anymore. Either way, we should find out roughly around July time whether Samsung has been paying attention or not, as that is when the Galaxy Z Fold 6 is expected to launch. And as usual, of course, loads of details on this upcoming bendy brick have gushed all over the internet like some sort of nerdy bakake type situation. So here's some bold tit on YouTube reading out some of those leaks and rumours for your view and pleasure after a mercifully short semi-jingle type thing. Techspert Weekly! Now, so far, the most thrilling leak suggests that Samsung will finally sort out that wonky, sausage-like, long and thin design. So the cover screen for the Z Fold 6 should be wider, with a more regular aspect ratio, making it actually good for more than just watching movies. You might even be able to actually type messages on it without frustratingly mistyping every other word, and shocking your grand by telling her you'll be around in five minutes to wank her dog. Now, some rumours reckon that that front panel will be a bit bigger too at 6.4 inches, possibly thanks to skinnier bezels. But other recent leaks say that that's all a steaming pile of Elon, a proper honking heap of musk. And apparently Samsung has actually just stuck with a 6.2 inch screen, same as its previous supple smartphone. And yet another recent leak splits the difference and reckons Samsung's gone with a 6.3 inch cover screen. So no one has a f***ing clue basically, absolute shocker. Other design changes for this generation include a fresh titanium frame, same as the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So this malleable Morpho should hopefully weigh less than the Z Fold 5, while still proven hardier than a rhino's arse cheeks. In fact, the Galaxy Z Fold 6 should be one tough mother with a Gorilla Glass armor display. Again, just like the S24 Ultra. And this isn't just highly smash resistant, it also kicks reflections right in the danglies. So this Samsung monolith should be quite easy to use outdoors again, or at least that cover screen should be. As for the whopping great bendy internal display, well, expect a 7.6-ish inch screen with a new and improved selfie camera camouflaged inside of it. So it's hopefully even less noticeable than before. However, in breaking news, they can sadly be filed under the heading of proper cack. Apparently, the Galaxy Z Fold 6 should come rocking the exact same camera tech as the old Z Fold 5. And if that's true, well, I'm fine with them using the same 50 meg main sensor, but it is a shame that spunking out this amount of cash would still only bag you a basic 10 meg telephoto shooter, even if Samsung has been beavering away on the computational camera processing shenanigans with that inevitable AI fiddling to sharpen up your pics. And speaking of which, yes, you absolutely can expect the Galaxy Z Fold 6 to come packing the exact same AI features that Samsung was enthusiastically rubbing its thighs over for the Galaxy S24 lot. This includes Circle to Search and that unintentionally hilarious messaging feature that can even make a foul-mouthed northern chimp like myself sound like some kind of top hat wearing Jacob Rees Mog toss piece. And yes, as it's another premium blow like the S24 series, Samsung should be offering seven full years of software support with your new Pliant Pal. The battery capacity may have slightly increased from 4,400 mAh to 4,600 mAh, which would still sadly be lagging behind the mightily impressive 5,000 mAh battery tech stuffed into the supremely skinny Honor Magic V2. And also lags behind the likes of the OnePlus Open, although again, a lot of recent rumours are suggesting that Samsung's just stuck with the exact same battery capacity as before. And as for the charging speeds, well, slow as balls, my friend. Slow as the slowest balls are there, just 25 watts. So again, seriously lagging behind the likes of the OnePluses and the Honors out there. Other specs are all too obvious, including the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 that will power this supple slab. So gaming on Genshin Impact should be a breeze as long as Samsung hasn't muffed up the cooling side of things. And then of course there's the all-important matter of pricing. So how much will the Galaxy Z Fold 6 cost? Well, <laughs> probably somewhere between a load and a ton. 
Let me just put it this way, better start stockpiling those orphans now so you can sell off their organs to the highest bidder. Here's hoping that Samsung can somehow shave a wee bit off that 1750 pound Asken price of the Z Fold 5, especially if they're sticking with some older tech like the slightly creaky cameras. But I wouldn't get your hopes too high. That said, some rumours have been circulating about a potentially more budget-friendly version of the Galaxy Z Fold 6 emerging either at the same time as the regular Z Fold 6 or maybe a wee bit afterwards. Some early leaks label it as the Galaxy Z Fold 6 FE or Fan Edition. You know, it won't be as good as the proper thing, but at least you'll save a few bucks. Or just like that time your kid asked for Wonder Woman to make an appearance at her birthday party. So you gave a tenner to some old souse down your local boozer to slap on a wig and wave a sword about the place. Memories to last a lifetime, as well as various restraining orders. However, there's also been lots of chats lately around an ultra version of the Galaxy Z Fold 6, which will empty your wallet even more violently, but possibly offer up the same snazzy camera setup as the S24 Ultra, complete with a 200 meg main shooter and a proper periscope zoom lens. Not to mention a built-in S Pen for all of your scribbly stylusy needs. So that right there, my lovelies, is all of the latest hot goss around the Galaxy Z Fold 6 and its potential siblings. But what do you reckon? Are you tempted to skin yourself with the Z Fold 6, completely skin yourself with the Z Fold 6 Ultra, or maybe only partially skin yourself with the Fan Edition? Definitely dive on into that forbidden section down there and uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts. And now it's time for the part of the show that, just like my love, won't cost you a thing. Although afterwards there's a good chance that it'll sting a bit when you pee. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> So let's week, let's start with uh, Dr. Wiggle Chin. You right, Doc? Is it all right if I call you Doc or, or Wiggles? Uh, he says, best of luck making it through the rest of April, lol. Uh, you know what, I really can't complain. April has certainly picked up after that cluster f of a first week. For one, my bonds is healing up nicely. I haven't managed to concuss myself any further by doing menial tasks like emptying the dishwasher. And at the weekend, Motorola flew a bunch of us tech spods out to an actual desert in Morocco to launch its new phones, which I still can't bloody talk about because of embargo shindiggery. But hey, there may finally be a video coming next week. Wink, wink. Grow up, grow up. But yeah, for the first time in what felt like months or possibly years, I got to don my budgie smugglers and splay my legs wide at a poolside bar. The landscape was suitably desolate. I kind of felt like I'd accidentally travelled to Middlesbrough. But sadly, the sitting around drinking beers bit was cut short when Motorola took us all up in a bloody great big hot air balloon, which as you can see, I was absolutely chuffed to bits about. I gotta say, I'm not really sure what Looney Tunes first decided that it would be a splendid idea to bugger about in the clouds in a giant picnic basket attached to a sheet, but they absolutely did not consider how to actually land the bloody thing when you're done. So at the end of it, we touched down with all the elegance and grace of an elephant having non-consensual intercourse with a donkey. You literally just slam down and then you're being dragged along the ground, bumping and banging all over the place. We actually ended up finally on our side, which was lovely. And that landing was so rough, I swear to God, I actually penetrated the guy beside me. But anyway, that wee trauma aside, it was a splendid trip, really can't complain. And I should actually have some fun footage for you, hopefully next Tuesday. Next up, Smitchy says, Get well, Chris, you sound exhausted. Should I start to be concerned that so many of these comments week after week are, Are you feeling all right, mate? Or you look really rough. You've got to take better care of yourself. And the thing is, I'm just far too dedicated to churning out top quality video content for you lovely folk at home rather than, you know, doing things like sleeping or bathing. Uh, but thank you for your concern. Much appreciated. And next up, Cameron Farrelly says, Blood and Honey 2 is the greatest redemption arc in recent memory. I just clocked after last week's show that these guys aren't just doing a Psycho Bambi spin-off as well. They're also doing like a Pinocchio one and a Peter Pan one, where presumably the wee green twat pimps out Tinkerbell to Randy Pirates or something. And following last week's show, we of course had lots of tasty gossip all about mini phones and how they're now deader than my soul. So Boz Q says, A nothing to a micro would have been too small to operate well, but a nothing to a compact would most definitely get me excited. Now, right, maybe like a 5.5-ish inch phone with all of the flashy bollocks and spangly specs and the nothing phone too. That would be absolutely spooge-tastic. Cat 90 says, I literally switched back to my Pixel 4a and sold my Xperia 1 Mark 5. I just couldn't deal with the bigger size anymore. 
And I've got to say, those old Pixels, man, they're still absolute bangers. Absolutely. I think that one's out of software support now, but apart from that, it just holds up so, so well. And the RB says, I really wanted the Nothing 2A to be smaller, but that didn't happen. Nope. Still a massive twat. A uh, user and then a whole bunch of numbers and letters says, I genuinely love a phone the size of the Zenfone 10 with the camera power of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. I mean, that sounds absolutely amazing, but that phone would be like 90% camera. That bump on the back was just outrageous. Uh, 50 Raw says, happily watching this on my XZ2 Compact and Stormer 6364 is even more old school. Says, watching on my Xperia XZ1 Compact, just bought a Google Pixel 4a, we'll start using it this week. A phone without a headphone socket is like buying an 80k Porsche without a cup holder. And yes, I still absolutely blame Apple for all this less is more bullshit. Guess what dickheads? No, more is more. Uh, the Bond 20 says, so many tech reviewers claim to hold a flame for compact and smaller smartphones, but I've never seen anyone do a video about how they use a Zenfone or similar on a daily basis. If I actually had the luxury of having a daily driver, uh, then it would absolutely be either the regular Pixel 8 or the Zenfone 10 or something dinky like that. But unfortunately, just so many new bloody smartphones and uh, I like to use them as my full-time phones. My SIM is basically in whatever fresh new handset I'm reviewing, which is inevitably some eight inch monster that uh, stretches all my pockets and gives me wrist ache. It's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Modest Man says, how TF are you going to watch movies or type on that freaking small phone? Yeah, typing would absolutely pose a bit of a problem, um, especially as, you know, we mentioned earlier, just typing on that really skinny screen on the Z Fold 5 is problematic enough. I thought to be fair, having said that, like, I've, I've used some smartwatches where you can actually type out a message reply on the a tiny little on-screen keyboard, and that's surprisingly good, depending on the manufacturer and the keyboard. Sometimes the autocorrect is good enough to basically work out some sort of semi-sensical version of what you're trying to say. And next up, Jopamwa says, uh, please never stop speaking about compact smartphones. I don't know what WTF is wrong with all of these companies making freaking giant smartphones that can't even fit in your pocket. Yeah, sadly, it's the gigantic blowers that seem to sell best out of all of them. So as with everything in life, the problem is people. This is why phones are massive and coffee cups come with warnings about the contents possibly being hot and Michael McIntyre has a career. People are f***ing ridiculous. But hey, we also came up with booze and instant noodles and dolphins. Well, not dolphins, they just kind of happened. But all that other stuff and Game of Thrones, we did all that. So, you know, people don't massively suck all of the time. The Bismarck says, it seems that folding and flipping phones are our only options for pocket rockets. It's not the worst option. They're compact stuffed in your pants and they can size up when pulled out. Fnaf fnaf. Dermot Smith says, any chance you could do a Textbook Weekly with the Biker Grove theme? I know you're from Sunderland and it's a show for Geordies, but I'd love to see you in a red curly wig in the style of Spuggy. I mean, if that's what you're into, then definitely 100% go check out my OnlyFans page. All of the spunky, spuggy goodness that your face can handle. And Zippy Finley Adventures says, would you do a Textbook Weekly in the style of the Geordie Jeans adverts? I might get sued to buggery by Vic and Bob, sadly. And SGSTU says, all geared up and ready for Fallout on Prime. I don't have the Primes, sadly. I've already got Disney Plus and Netflix and stuff. And I won't absolutely sod all on any of them because I've got no bloody time. So I really can't justify having another streaming service. Although I am absolutely gagging for a bit of Invincible Season 2. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I, I love Fallout, but I think I'm a bit Fallouted out, so to speak, as I've played like every single game in the franchise, sometimes multiple times. I think the only one I didn't actually play was that weird online one they did. And you think that some of the fictional characters in Fallout are proper f***ed up until you have to actually interact with real life humans. And then you actually yearn to spend more time with the cannibal gang who spends every evening skull f***ing farmyard animals. Now, Janifex says, Uncle Spurt, first time mentioning your wife. Why have we never seen that woman? Is she the one operating the camera? Uh, there is absolutely nobody operating that camera. I can tell you that. Hence, the only time it isn't perfectly static is when I pause it and move the bloody thing around myself. And she doesn't get involved in the videos because she's got an actual real life proper job rather than slowing away through reviews of shiny tech stuff or talking to a soggy sock puppet. And continues, my question to you, Mr. Spurt, is are you excited for the new Samsung Galaxy Ring? 
Looks like she wanted several questions, but I'll let you off. Uh, am I excited for the Samsung Galaxy Ring? Emphatically. But anyway, better make that the last comment for the week because we've absolutely run out of time uh, quite, quite a while ago, in fact. But a massive, massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Much appreciated. As always, please do smash your comments down below. We'll try and get away through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week... Next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? Well, as previously mentioned, I went off some Motorola-related shenanigans for you next week, next Tuesday, I believe, is when that embargo finally lifts. And that's just one of three embargoes lifting next week, in fact, because we've also got uh, some nothing-related shenanigans on the 18th. They're going to do a, a bit of a community update, and there'll be some more products there, which I'm hoping to bring you some video on, and also a bit of uh, techno action, by the looks of it, on the 20th, on Saturday. No weekend for your Uncle Spurt then. Um, no worries, I'll just booze my way through it as usual. So anyway, huge cheers to everyone for joining me for this whole shower of As always, please do put subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and hopefully see you same time next week. Cheers everyone, love you.